The cab fare had risen to over two hundred dollars. The driver looked back at his female passenger. She had no coat, no purse, and no phone. He had no idea how she planned to pay him. He could see that she was desperate, but he couldn't afford the financial loss of giving her a free ride. I'm sorry, but this is as far as I'll go. I've got a business to run, he said, holding his hands up apologetically. It took Samantha a moment to understand what he meant. When the realization dawned, she tore off her bracelet and handed it to him. Sir, that's platinum, and the diamonds are real. Can I use it to pay the fare? She asked. Please, there's somewhere I need to go. The driver looked down at the bracelet. He had no idea if it was real or fake. He eventually sighed and said, All right, but then I'm done. Where is it you want to go? Thank you, she said, taking a deep breath. Rock Hill Manor. Rock Hill Manor was Alexander's private residence. The property was one of the worst kept secrets in the state. Everyone knew he was the heir to the famous Brown family. People often tried to break in to meet him, but it was the first time the guards had discovered a bald hospital patient in a pair of slippers. I bet he's here to ask the boss for money, a young guard said. Who cares? Just kick him out, the older guard replied. The man proved to be surprisingly strong and stubborn. They could see the desperation and hatred in his bloodshot eyes as he continued to fight them. Discussions ensued on how to deal with their uninvited guest. Do you think he has mental health issues? I don't care. Maybe we should wait till the boss gets back. If he's here when Mr. Brown returns, we'll both be in big trouble. If he doesn't leave on his own accord, we'll have to make him leave. Samantha's nerves were shot by the time she arrived at the gates of Rock Hill Manor. The heavy rain pelting the car windows only added to her sense of impending doom. Her heart skipped another beat when she heard shouting coming from somewhere close by. She wound down the window to see if her brother was involved in the commotion. I told you to get lost, the older guard shouted. This isn't the place for you. Christ, you just bit me, the younger guard exclaimed. Seriously, if you don't stop, I'm going to kill you. The guards knew if the crazed man got into the building, they would be the ones to pay the price. They felt that they had no choice but to do things the hard way and resort to violence. The cab driver watched in horror as the guards continued to kick and punch the man as he lay on the ground. He decided he would not be going any further. He didn't think his passenger should either. He turned around to look at her and said, Are you sure you want to get out here? I'm happy to drive you back down the mountain. The tear-stained woman in red wasn't listening. Instead of taking his advice, she reached for the door handle and rushed from the vehicle. He noted her pale, panic-stricken face as she ran. Thomas! she shouted. Stop! Stop! You're hurting him! As she got closer, she saw her brother crawling on the ground. His blue and white pajamas were soaked and covered in large footprints. His face was severely grazed, and a gaping wound was on his forehead. The rain washed away the blood, only to gather again and run down his face. She could tell he was exhausted, but his determination saw him once again trying to scale the main gate. As the guards were preparing for their next attack, Samantha threw herself on top of Thomas and used her body to protect him. The guards were too far gone to stop. Through the darkness and rain, they could scarcely make out the woman in red who was stupid enough to try and protect the crazed man, trying to break into Rock Hill Manor. Her face was puffed up from crying, and her wet hair was matted and in disarray. They decided she must just be as crazy as he was, and if she wasn't going to get out of the way, she'd have to take his beating. Samantha cried out as fists landed on her back and a boot connected with her ribs. She had never experienced pain like it. It penetrated her skin and took root in her bones. It felt like every nuance of her body was on fire. She squeezed her eyes closed, causing her mascara to run down her face and mix with the rain and tears. Thomas heard the familiar voice and realized the person clawing at him was not an enemy, but his sister. He couldn't believe she was living at Rock Hill Manor. He was instantly filled with despair and thought, she really is married to the trash of the Brown family, Alex. Sam, he cried. Thomas, don't be afraid. I'm here for you, she said. Did you sell yourself for me? He asked. That ring, you got it from Alex, didn't you? Yes, 
Samantha choked out as the blows continued to rain down, and she did her best to shield him. Sam, don't worry about me. You need to get out of the way, Thomas pleaded. He used his hands to try and slide out from beneath her. He gained some leverage, but his efforts were thwarted when one of the guards stomped his fingers into the ground and he let out a blood-curdling roar. As the rain continued to fall, the two siblings had no choice but to hold on to one another and wait for their beating to end. Jack put the pedal to the metal as they headed up the mountain towards Rock Hill Manor. He was the first to see the dire scene unfolding as they approached the gates. Jack gulped and thought, It's over. All hell is about to break loose. Alexander's expression changed from fear to rage in an instant. His heart and lungs were filled with so much fury he thought he might burst. He was already out of the car and running before Jack could bring the vehicle to a halt. He staggered as a result of the change in motion before regaining his balance and sprinting towards his wife. Jack knew the situation was about to get even worse. Stop, both of you! He shouted as he got out of the vehicle. The guards had not been familiar with Samantha's voice, but they were familiar with Jack's and stopped instantly. Alexander stood over the bloodied bodies in a daze. He could see that they were entwined tightly together, protecting one another. He clenched his fists, forcing the veins on the back of his hands to bulge. Mr. Brown! The guards were shocked and greeted him in unison. Alexander had become drenched in the few minutes he had been standing there. His silver-gray suit was dripping, his hair clung to his scalp, and his expression was murderous. His men were accustomed to viewing him as powerful and meticulous. Standing there in the rain, he knew he was anything but. Jack had grabbed an umbrella, but he didn't dare to approach Alexander. Alex, Samantha whispered, her voice hoarse as she held her unconscious brother close. Thomas had tried to remain awake as long as possible to protect her, but succumbed to pain and exhaustion. When he heard Samantha call out to Alexander, he used the last of his strength to open his eyes. Through blurred vision, he could still make out her husband's handsome but furious face. He realized instantly he had seen him before. Call the private doctor, quick! Jack ordered one of the guards. Thomas? Samantha cried when her brother passed out again. She couldn't bear the thought of losing her brother. She grabbed Alexander's ankle and begged, Alex, save him! Please save him! Alexander realized the only person Samantha would risk her lifelong dream and career for was Thomas. When he had received the news that her brother had found out about their marriage and discharged himself from the hospital, he had rushed back to Rock Hill Manor. Alexander emerged from his trance to squat and carefully pick up his wife. He noticed she was covered in blood and did his best not to move too quickly for fear of aggravating her injuries. No, oh, Samantha protested, refusing to let Thomas go. Save him! Save my brother! Alexander was unable to pry her away without hurting her. He waited while she begged and cried. He had never seen her in such a state, and it broke his heart. Sam, do you want to die? He growled. You keep asking me to save your little brother. Is the only room in your heart for him? Alex, please, please, I beg you, she continued. Alexander didn't have time for his pleas. Her lips were turning blue, and her body was burning up. Alexander didn't know how to feel or deal with the strange, aching sensation in his heart. He took pride in being a logical thinker, but being caught somewhere between anger and fear had caused his senses to freeze in the most painful of ways. He found he couldn't breathe, let alone think. He had so much he wanted to say, but the words wouldn't come. He tried to pull himself together. If you don't let him go, how can I save him? He reasoned. Jack heard him and ordered the two guards to carry Thomas up to the house. The guards did as they were asked instantly. They knew there would be repercussions for their actions. They may have failed to recognize Samantha, but they had never seen her brother. Surely that counts for something, thought the older guard. Wasn't she supposed to be at some competition? The younger guard whispered. Samantha heaved a sigh of relief and collapsed into Alexander's arms. He carried her to the car and cradled her in his lap. As soon as he closed the car door, Jack sped towards the entrance of the house. My brother, Samantha repeated. He's not far behind. You'll see him soon. 
Alexander snapped. Beyond his aching heart, he was irritable. He didn't want to help Thomas at all. Convinced Alexander was telling the truth and that he would help her brother, Samantha finally succumbed to her injuries and passed out. Samantha? Alexander called out. He was terrified when she didn't respond. He placed his fingers on her neck and noticed her skin was burning to the touch. His heart tripped over itself as his whole body tensed. Drive faster, he ordered. Alexander was relieved to discover that most of their injuries were superficial. The guards had been trained to cause as much pain as possible with the least amount of force. Thomas looked worse for wear but was the least injured. After being treated by Alexander's private doctor, he was given the all-clear. Samantha, on the other hand, was suffering from a high fever. Alexander arranged for Thomas to rest in one of the guest rooms while Samantha slept in the master bedroom. The doctor had inserted a cannula into the back of her hand to administer medicine and fluids. Alexander stood watching by the side of the bed with a solemn expression. Thomas has woken up and is asking for his sister, Jim said, entering the room. Also, Miss Dawson is here to see Mrs. Brown. Do you want me to let her in? No, Alexander replied icily. Tell them my wife isn't up to visitors. As far as Alexander was concerned, Thomas's behavior was the reason Samantha's fair skin was covered in cuts and bruises. Jim bowed his head in response. He was used to Alexander's unsympathetic disposition. His circle of friends was limited, and he had little time or compassion for those he didn't care about. Sir, if I may say, Thomas is your brother-in-law, and your wife loves him dearly. It would mean a lot to her if you gave him a chance, Jim said, trying his best to persuade him. Ava also cares a great deal about your wife. They have a strong bond. I think it would do you good to have support from others who love her, don't you think? Alexander frowned. You think I should get to know them? Jim tilted his head and said, I don't think it would do any harm to get to know them slightly. Alexander had been taught very little about relationships. Bonding with others didn't come easily to him, but Jim knew him well enough to know what he was capable of. Tell one of the staff to allow Ava inside. Thomas can wait in his room for now, he said as he looked down at Samantha. She had yet to recover fully from her fever. Her face was gaunt, and her brow was furrowed, even in sleep, as she worried about her brother. Alexander eventually left Samantha. He noticed Thomas at the end of the corridor, making a nuisance of himself. He was wrapped in bandages, and his bald head was on display. The chemotherapy had caused him to lose most of his hair. He had shaved off the rest by himself. Alexander could see that he was still a handsome man despite his illness. "'You're my sister's husband!' Thomas exclaimed as he approached. He had noticed how respectful and disciplined the staff had been as soon as Alexander had appeared. Alexander sneered in response. He had no time for the man and wasn't sure how to pretend otherwise. Yes, I'm your new brother-in-law, he replied, his tongue laced with distaste. Alexander wondered how Thomas expected to protect his sister when he didn't even recognize him. They had met before, and either he was pretending he hadn't figured out his identity, or he really wasn't a worthy adversary. Thomas narrowed his eyes. Alexander could feel the hostility in the air. I can't believe I saved him, Alexander mused. Alexander, I presume, Thomas said, looking Alexander up and down as if he were sizing him up for a fight. Alexander was surprised by how imposing he actually was. Under different circumstances, he could see that Thomas could hold himself well. You can call me Alex, he replied, since we're family, Alexander said, smirking as he lit a cigarette. Family is a strong word, Thomas said, laughing. I'd hope my sister had higher standards. Apart from those brooding good looks, what can you truly offer Sam? He wasn't scared of Alexander and wanted him to know it. He'd been told in the past that he was disfigured, but it was obvious to him that his face wasn't scarred. Alexander gave Jim a sideways glance as he passed. Is this what he had in mind? He wondered. Jim grimaced. It was obvious to him that things weren't going well. Both men appeared enraged and on the verge of losing their tempers. Jim thought that if he didn't find some common ground, fists would fly. 
It happened much quicker than Jim had anticipated, and he soon found himself dealing with two hot-tempered and powerful men. He was old and tired, and he had enough of grown men acting like children. Get him out of my house, Alexander ordered his bodyguard. The suited man immediately grabbed Thomas by the shoulders. When Thomas tried to free himself from his grip, a struggle ensued. Sir, your wife is still ill and has yet to wake up. As her husband and brother, you're both extremely important to her. You'll see each other often and have to find a way to be civil, Jim advised. If you have preconceived ideas about one another, you'd best discuss them now. Alexander and Thomas looked at each other. They had no intention of discussing their differences and finding common ground. Thomas stopped struggling with the bodyguard and held up his hands. After six months of chemotherapy, he was exhausted. He knew he was in Alexander's territory, and therefore he held the upper hand. His upper hand came from his weapons and artillery. If I'd brought my gun with me, we'd know who the boss was, he thought. Mr. Brown, a maid called out. Miss Dawson is here. Eva had been standing for a few moments and was horrified by what she had witnessed. Take your hands off him, she said to the guard. When he refused, she turned to Alexander. What are you doing? She snapped. He has cancer. Eva was already furious. As soon as she discovered that Samantha had been attacked on his property, she made her way there. On arrival, she had been informed that she had a fever and was yet to wake up. Alexander shot Thomas a look of contempt. Then he shouldn't be out of the hospital and running around. Thomas lowered his head in shame. He knew he had been reckless and was to blame for his sister's injuries. Eva had known Thomas for a long time and regarded him as family. There was no way she was going to make him feel worse than he already felt. She sighed in resignation and turned to Alexander. How is Sam? she asked. I know how to take care of her, he told Ava. There's no need for you to interfere. Alex wanted to return to the master bedroom to watch over Samantha. He had found that he couldn't relax unless he could see that she was okay. His desire to be everything she needed outweighed his desire to appease her friends and family. Before he took his leave, he turned to Thomas. If you're going to stay, at least clean yourself up. You don't want your sister seeing you in that state. Alex, Thomas called out to him. I want you to let my sister go. You've got to be kidding me, Alexander said, looking set to explode. Thomas ground his teeth and roared. You're not good enough for her. Thomas, calm down, Ava shouted before she turned to Alexander. Take good care of Sam and let the rest of your staff see your face. They didn't recognize you without your mask and probably thought you were an intruder. They didn't recognize Sam either. Alexander glared at her before leaving and returning to the master bedroom. The guards involved had been fired for assaulting Alexander's wife. Accidental or not, Alexander had decided that they had to be dealt with. Jim turned to Ava and said, Miss Dawson, Alex loves Sam very much. Don't worry, he'll take good care of her. Love, Ava mused. Is he really capable of love? She refrained from voicing her true feelings in the face of the older man's kindness. She gave him a small smile and turned to Thomas. I suggest you go to take a shower and change your clothes. When Sam wakes up, you can go in, Ava said softly. If she sees you like this, she'll be worried. Ava wasn't surprised when Thomas nodded. She knew she was one of the few people who could persuade him to calm down when he was being unreasonable. Jim had been in the job for a long time and prided himself on being thorough. He had already organized a clean set of clothes to be sent to Thomas's room. As soon as he changed, he would arrange for the soiled clothing to be laundered. Ava called out to Thomas as he was about to leave. Do you realize Sam gave up her position in the finals to come and find you? Her words caught him off guard. The anger he had been feeling dissipated and was immediately replaced with regret. He had completely forgotten about the competition. No, he said, closing his eyes. Lily set me up, he realized. Lily could have told him any time about the marriage, but she had chosen the day of the finals. He had assumed Lily was looking out for Samantha. He hadn't expected her to betray their sister to such an extent. His heart was instantly filled with animosity and loathing. I'm so sorry, he said, hanging his head. 
He knew that being a model had been Samantha's dream. I'm not the one you should be apologizing to, Ava stated. She suddenly remembered that Samantha had deliberately kept her marriage to Alexander a secret from Thomas. How did you know about Sam's marriage? She asked. Thomas clenched his jaw and said, Lily told me. I fell into her trap. Lily again? Ava thought with a frown. Ava knew Thomas would be devastated that he destroyed Samantha's chances in the competition, but she had never been good at comforting people. She patted his broad shoulder and realized that if he survived his illness and became strong again, he would be a force to be reckoned with. Thomas, you have to look after yourself. Your health is very important, especially to your sister. Your actions have consequences. She was worried sick about you, and look what happened. You and Alex fighting all the time won't help anyone. I know, Thomas replied. But how could she marry someone like him? That's your sister's business, Ava replied sternly. He's... Thomas, you can't interfere with her marriage. One day you'll understand. Besides, he treats her well. All right, Thomas muttered. No one will ever be good enough for her anyway. Ava wanted to laugh, but she stopped herself. He had always felt like that. It didn't matter if it was Samantha, her, or Aubrey. He never thought any man was good enough for the women he cared about in his life. Well, I hope you get the chance. You'll show us what a good man looks like, she replied. Thomas scowled. I'm never getting married. The only woman in my life from now on is my sister. Ava's heart filled with warmth. She knew Samantha was the most important person in the world to him. It made her think of her own brother. They had once shared a similar bond. Her friends had been envious of their close relationship. When he got into trouble, everything changed, including their opinions. His brain injury had ended their envy and her own bond. The competition was coming to an end, and the final votes had been counted. As the contestants lined up on the stage, the audience and judges were unpleasantly surprised to find that Samantha was missing. Everyone loved seeing someone new do well. She had been the competition's dark horse. I'm sorry, Sam had to withdraw, the organizer explained. Agents had traveled from all over the country to meet Samantha in person. They knew the opposition would rush to sign her. Each agency had prepared a deal they hoped would outdo their competitors. When she failed to take the stage, word quickly spread that she had gotten into an argument with a team member and had stormed off. The agents were quick to turn on her and express their displeasure. She has absolutely no professionalism. I heard she doesn't even have an agent. Really? We plan to offer her a contract. I'm glad we found out what she's like before we made that mistake. I see quite a few top agents have turned up. She'll live to regret it. She won't get a second chance. An anxious Alexander stood in the master bedroom of Rock Hill Manor, watching Samantha move her fingers. He held his breath as her eyelids fluttered, and she furrowed her brow as if she was experiencing an internal struggle. Sam, Alexander cried. He reached over and touched his fingers to her forehead and was relieved to discover that the fever had subsided. Samantha was agitated. Her brother's pale face had haunted her while she had been unconscious. She opened her eyes and recognized the gothic ceiling decorations of Alexander's bedroom. As her mind cleared, she remembered the fight with the guards and her brother's lifeless body in her arms. Alex, where's Thomas? she asked immediately. Alexander breathed a sigh of relief, but the loving words he had wanted to say were stifled by his displeasure. Of course he's the first person she asks for, he thought angrily. When he didn't reply, Samantha began to panic. Did something happen to him? She asked as she struggled to sit up. I want to see him. Lie down, Alexander ordered. You can't move yet. He gently pushed her back down onto the mattress. Your brother is fine. The obnoxious little shit woke up some time ago. Samantha sagged back onto the pillow and pouted. She was grateful to Alexander for helping him, but she didn't like him calling her brother names. Alex, please don't talk about Thomas that way, she whispered. Alexander opened his mouth, and then he closed it again. He wanted to tell her exactly what he thought of her brother, but he knew she wasn't up to hearing it, so he swallowed his unsavory comments. Samantha tried to sit up again. Will you lie still? You're covered in bruises, 
Alexander said as he pressed her back down again and tucked the covers tightly around her chest. Aren't you in pain? he asked. He knew his patience was in short supply, but he tried his best to hold it together. Yes, I'm in pain, she thought. I hurt right down to my bones. Alexander struggled to remain annoyed as she looked at him with sad eyes. He thought she looked adorable, wrapped up beneath the soft cotton sheets. Are you still angry with me? she asked when she remembered their earlier argument. It was the last thing he wanted to discuss. Damn it, you're determined to push me, he grumbled. She refused to let the matter drop. David and I are just friends. I'd originally hired a guy named Caleb, but he let me down at the last minute. David stepped in to help out. Alexander snorted. She's only making things worse, he thought. He had already been in a lousy mood and annoyed that David had been there. Caleb was a new threat to add to his list. Alex, I want to see Thomas. I can't relax until I know he's okay, she said, keeping her tone as soft as her eyes. She knew she had Alexander to thank for the fact that Thomas was safe. She also knew it was not in his nature to take strangers into his home. Alexander hadn't wanted to let him in. He hated the way she treated him with such affection. Sam, he's a grown man, not a baby, he exclaimed. In my heart, he'll always be my baby brother, she said, smiling. Alexander scowled and said, I'll make sure our son doesn't give you this much trouble. What did you just say? A wide-eyed Samantha asked. When did I agree to give birth to a son for you? I'll take a daughter then, he replied nonchalantly. If she looks anything like her mother, she'll be beautiful, he mused. Alex, I'm being serious, she said as she began to cough. So am I, he replied as he gently turned her to her side so he could pat her back. Samantha looked towards the closed door and frowned. Alexander relented. Okay, he can come in, but if he upsets you even a little bit, he's out, he said, pointing his finger. Samantha grinned and said, Thank you, Alex. Jim was sent to tell Ava and a freshly showered Thomas that Samantha was awake. Ava agreed to let him go in and see his sister first. He wasted no time rushing to her room. Sam! he exclaimed when he reached her bedside. Samantha examined Thomas from head to toe, looking for any indication that he was in more pain than he would admit. Thomas, are you all right? she asked. Where does it hurt? We should go to the hospital and get you checked out properly. Alexander pressed his lips into a fine line and shook his head in dismay. She was lying on the bed with two large pillows behind her back, supporting her injured body. In his mind, she wasn't strong enough to take Thomas to the hospital. Samantha pretended she couldn't see his animated response. I'm fine, Thomas answered as he lowered his head. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble for you. Alexander crossed his arms over his chest and snorted. He waited for Thomas to start arguing, but instead, he stood there despondently, like a child caught doing something wrong and waiting to be punished. Alex, don't be like this, please, Samantha begged. She wasn't happy with his attitude towards her brother. She knew Thomas was feeling guilty enough. Alexander glared at Thomas. He wasn't fooled by the childlike act he was putting on for his sister. He guessed exactly what he was capable of. He saw when Thomas faced others, he acted arrogant and untouchable. In front of Samantha, he acted innocent and vulnerable. Ava appeared in the doorway. As soon as she stepped inside, she sensed the tense atmosphere. What are you doing here? Samantha asked with excitement shining in her eyes. She hadn't expected Ava to visit her. My best friend went missing, got injured, and then became unwell with the fever. Aren't I allowed to come? Ava asked. I'm sorry I made you worry, Samantha replied. Alexander allowed them to chat for a while. When he saw his wife was beginning to tire, he asked them to leave. Sam needs to rest now, he said. Ava looked at Alexander. It was the first time she had noticed that he was still wearing his work suit. There were stains on it, and she realized that he hadn't showered or changed since the incident. More importantly to her, she realized he hadn't left Sam's side while she had been unconscious, and obviously cared more about her than she had first imagined. Please don't let him turn out to be a scumbag, she thought. I'll go first, Ava said, touching her hand to Samantha's. That'll give you and Thomas some time to chat more. I'll come and see you again soon. Show Ava out, please, 
Alexander instructed a nearby maid. Send me a message to let me know you're home safe, Samantha said. Thomas looked at Ava and gave her a curt nod and said, Be safe, Ava. Why is he still here? Alexander thought irritably. As far as he was concerned, Ava leaving was his cue to say his goodbyes, too. Thomas glanced at Alexander, but made no effort to move. Instead, he turned back to his sister and continued to talk to her if they had all the time in the world. He asked if she felt any discomfort and if the injuries on her body hurt. Samantha told him she was fine and inquired about his condition and whether he was still being monitored by the hospital. When Alexander had had enough, he summoned a maid to escort Thomas back to his room to rest. "'I don't want to rest. I want to stay with Sam,' he said, shaking his head. Alexander rolled his eyes in frustration. "'Alex, I'm not tired either,' Samantha said. She wasn't ready to say goodbye to her brother. She watched as Alexander went to the door and called for two bodyguards. She couldn't believe he would have Thomas thrown out. "'Alex!' she exclaimed, giving him an incredulous look. She could tell he was unhappy about the situation, and Thomas didn't look like he would back down, even though he looked tired. She didn't want the situation to escalate, so she asked her brother to leave. Thomas, I know the hospital will be anxiously waiting to hear from you. Give Dr. Lopez a call and then take the opportunity to rest, she said. She knew the guilt would make him respect her wishes, even if he disagreed with her words. After Thomas left the room, Samantha hoped Alexander would stop pacing, but he still looked agitated. Alex, Thomas is very protective of me, she told him. My mother and I weren't close when I was a child. If I made her unhappy in any way, she would starve me. Thomas would secretly bring me food. Later, I discovered that his portion he'd been giving to me, and he'd been starving himself to make sure I didn't. Alexander felt uncomfortable listening to her. It hurt to think of her starving as a child. He hung his head in fury. How could her mother be so heartless, he thought. When I was in primary school, some classmates bullied me, Samantha continued. Thomas is four years younger, so he was much smaller than me at the time. He came to our class with a stick and fought with a boy much taller than he was. No matter what, he always looked out for me. Alexander sat on the bed and listened to her reminisce. Later on, when we moved in with my father, Thomas was given preferential treatment because he was the only son. To protect me, Thomas openly opposed many of our father's rules, eventually losing him a favor. What exactly do you want me to say? He asked. It hadn't escaped his attention that the stories were more than just a trip down memory lane. Samantha propped herself up a little higher on the bed and stared deeply into Alexander's eyes. I want Thomas to come and live at Rock Hill Manor. I'm concerned about him. Alexander snorted loudly and said, I never raised my own brothers, yet you want me to raise yours? I never asked you to raise him. Don't be ridiculous, she replied, forcing herself to smile. It won't be for long, just until his condition is stable, and then I'll rent a house for him somewhere. He protected me when I was a child. I want to return the favor now that he needs me. Please, Alex, he's my only brother. If he needs a house, he can have one of mine. You just have to choose which one. He can move in immediately, Alexander suggested. He couldn't remember if he had told her that he owned multiple properties other than Rock Hill Manor. Samantha shook her head in disbelief. She didn't care if he had other houses. It was where she lived and she wanted her brother to live so she could care for him. I have to wait for him to recover. Otherwise, I won't be at ease, she explained. Sam, he has leukemia, not a small cold, Alexander scoffed. He's not going to recover anytime soon, so why wait? Alexander's harsh words made Samantha's face pale. She knew Thomas was still seriously ill, even if he didn't act like it. The chemotherapy slowed down the disease, but he could deteriorate at any moment. Alexander closed his eyes to think. When he opened them again, he reached for Samantha's face and stroked her cheek. He can stay in one of the guest rooms for now, he said. Samantha's eyes lit up, and she surprised Alexander with a tight hug. Thank you, Alex, she whispered. The floral and citrus scent of her hair tickled Alexander's nostrils. His heart skipped a beat, and he smiled against her shoulder. Her eagerness to throw herself into his arms had come as a pleasant surprise to him. 
His joy was short-lived when he thought about the prospect of living with Thomas. It's gonna take more than a hug to make it up to me, he grumbled. Samantha was too elated to respond. She knew he was teasing her because the corner of his mouth was tipped up in a small smile. She couldn't help being pleased that something good had come from such a terrible ordeal. Although she had missed the competition finals, she was elated that she had her brother by her side. Alexander temporarily suspended the board of directors. He felt that too many things needed attention, and he could only do so much from the chair in the master bedroom. Tim was acting as a go-between and transporting important documents back and forth between Rock Hill Manor and the Blue Whale Enterprise offices. When Samantha woke up, she realized she was wearing a fresh set of silk pajamas. While Alexander was out of the room making a phone call, she asked the maid what had happened. Did you change my clothes? She asked. The maid smiled and shook her head. Mr. Brown won't let anyone tend to you. He applied medicated lotion to your injuries and changed you personally. Samantha's heart began to thump and her cheeks turned red. When the maid saw her embarrassment, she added softly, He really is good to you. I know, Samantha replied. She could feel that he was good to her. Outside the door, Alexander said to Jack, Find a bone marrow match for Thomas as soon as possible. I don't care if you have to travel the world. Jack was puzzled by Alexander's sudden need to cure his brother-in-law. He knew it wasn't his place to question his decisions, so he did what he was employed to do and made the necessary calls. Alexander knew he was intrigued, but he also knew that Jack was astute and guessed he would work out soon enough that he didn't care about Thomas at all. He just wanted him out of his house. Jim did as he was told and took Thomas to the guest room, which had been prepared for his stay. Once alone, Thomas called the hospital and asked for Dr. Lopez. Where are you? Blaine asked as soon as he heard Thomas's voice on the line. You have urgent matters to attend to. I want to learn to fight, Thomas stated calmly. Sorry, what? Blaine stuttered. I said I want to learn to fight, Thomas repeated. That's ridiculous, Blaine exclaimed, scratching his head. You're the brains of our operation. You don't need to fight. There's men to protect you. What kind of fighting are you planning on? You're just recovering from your own fight. Your body doesn't need any more stress. I might be on your payroll, but I'm still your doctor. He warned. I want to beat up my sister's husband, Thomas replied. Even if you start learning now, Blaine said, chuckling. When he gets old, I'll definitely be able to beat him up, Thomas grumbled. Blaine felt like he was speaking to an impulsive child instead of the person who had intimidated him and threatened to have his arm broken. You've got more chances of getting your sister to divorce him, Blaine replied. Thomas looked to the ceiling. Oh, how I want to, he thought. But he had promised Ava that he wouldn't interfere in their marriage. He wondered what she thought of the match, and he decided he would ask her next time he saw her. Thomas, one more thing, Blaine said. One of the agents we contacted to offer Sam a contract said she left the final suddenly. He said all the big fashion agencies were backtracking, and hiring her wouldn't look good for business. Thomas had offered them all large amounts of money to sign a contract with the sister. He had also offered to pay all the fees for the company she chose. They could also keep all the commission they earned by having her on their books. As far as he was concerned, it was a win-win situation. Thomas's stomach nodded with guilt. Samantha had left the competition because of him. Increase pressure on the top agencies, he ordered. As long as they sign my sister, they don't stand to lose any money. Blaine wasn't finished. One other thing, he said. Sam's withdrawal from the competition made some serious waves in the fashion After promising Blaine he would deal with everything and hanging up, he searched for news about the competition. As Blaine had stated, there was no negative news about Sam's sudden departure on any fashion forums. He knew walking out would damage his sister's reputation, and he felt solely responsible. He guessed that it was Alexander who was protecting Samantha, and he had mixed feelings about it. Later that day, Thomas volunteered to cook dinner for Samantha. 
She didn't want him to tire himself out, but she couldn't convince him to let her cook instead. The kitchen door was propped open, and Samantha knelt on the couch with her arm resting on the back, looking into the kitchen. She watched the figure of her brother moving around the kitchen with a face full of relief and happiness. Sam, sit properly, Alexander said with a stern expression. When she ignored him, he patted her bottom. Ah! Samantha exclaimed and looked at her husband in shock. Alex, you've done it again! Don't touch me like that! Alexander raised his chin and gestured for her to sit properly. Jim watched from the side of the room and chuckled at how Alexander couldn't stand to see his wife looking at someone else, even if it was her brother. Alex, believe me, Thomas's cooking is very good, said Samantha. She hoped that her brother would live with them in the future, so she tried to give a favorable impression of her brother. To Alexander, it sounded like Samantha was just showing off, and he didn't like it. He looked at her disdainfully and said, How good can it be? In the past, when I was sick, it was Thomas who cooked for me, Samantha explained. Even if his culinary skills aren't as good as those fancy chefs you invited, his food is still delicious and comforting. Alexander stood up and walked to the kitchen, where Thomas was cutting broccoli with an apron on. He observed that Thomas's knife skills weren't as good as Samantha's, but he could see that they weren't as bad as he watched him skillfully stir-fry the broccoli. "'What are you looking at? Don't tell me you know how to cook,' Thomas asked, giving Alexander a contemptuous look. He put the sauce and other seasonings into the frying pan. Alexander didn't say anything. Thomas had found out that Alexander's three daily meals were her sister's responsibility, and he wasn't impressed. He didn't like his sister being ordered around like a cook, and he thought it was unforgivable. He removed the broccoli from the pan and put it on a plate. Then he washed the pan and set about making something else. Alexander continued to watch, and he observed that Thomas's dishes were unlike Samantha's dishes because she paid attention to the details. He noted, however, that there were similarities in how they cooked, and it seemed obvious to him that they had lived together for a long time. Alexander pursed his thin lips at Thomas's jibe. I don't need to enter a kitchen, he thought. I pay people to do that. It's not something I need to learn. I can treat her to a chef, he said to Thomas. Thomas tutted and rolled his eyes. Alexander was speechless. He felt that his brother-in-law was getting more and more annoying. Thomas didn't like Alexander, so he said, My sister taught me how to cook. She once said that a man who doesn't know how to cook for his wife can't be called a loving husband. As he spoke, he looked meaningfully at his brother-in-law and laughed. Taking another dig at the other man, he said, Alex, I'm talking about you. Alexander's expression became even uglier as his anger increased. Samantha deliberately left some time and space for Thomas and Alexander to have a private chat. She saw that they didn't argue, but Alexander stayed standing in the doorway. His tall body leaned against the doorframe, and she couldn't see either man's expression. She also couldn't hear what they spoke about. After a while, Alexander returned with a cold expression. Samantha asked worriedly, Alex, you and Thomas weren't arguing again, right? Thomas is a high school student. You should know better. Alexander snorted at how naive Samantha thought her brother was. He may be young, but he's not simple, he thought. At 15, I was planning for Blue Whale Enterprises. Sam, did you teach Thomas his culinary skills? He asked with a solemn face. Samantha nodded and explained patiently. I can't take care of him for the rest of his life. He's going to have a family in the future. Anyway, cooking is a life skill. Alexander's face darkened as he realized that Thomas hadn't lied when he told him what Samantha had once said about cooking. Samantha was aware that Thomas only knew how to cook a few dishes, and some of those Alexander wouldn't like. So as Thomas began to bring dishes to the table, she asked, Alex, what do you want to eat? I can make something for you. Thomas frowned at his sister. Sam, I've cooked, he said. She spoils this man too much, he thought in outrage. Samantha patted his shoulder to comfort him, and Thomas obediently shut his mouth and stared at Alexander instead. No need, said Alexander as he sat down at the head of the table and picked up his fork. Sam, take a seat, ordered Thomas as he pressed Samantha into a chair. She sat down and he brought her cutlery. I haven't cooked in months. What do you think of my cooking? He asked his sister. 
Alexander silently took a deep breath and hovered his fork over the plate in front of him. Samantha looked at Alexander, picked up a piece of chicken with her fork, and took a small bite. It wasn't like hers, but it was good. Samantha gave Thomas a praising look and gave him a thumbs up. On seeing the gesture, Alexander felt slightly relieved and tasted the chicken and vegetables too. The others watched him closely. Samantha was worried that Alexander wouldn't like it and be rude to her brother. Thomas was worried that his efforts weren't good enough and that he had embarrassed his sister. Alexander chewed a few times with an expressionless face. After swallowing it, he looked at Thomas. Although my sister taught me how to cook, I'm not a very good student, Thomas said quickly. You can't judge my sister by my standards. He was afraid that Alexander would complain about his sister because of his cooking. Samantha looked at Alexander nervously. She was completely unsure what he would say next, but all he said was, let's eat. He forced himself to swallow the food, and Samantha breathed a sigh of relief and smiled. Maybe his intolerances have improved, she hoped. Thomas smiled and sat down. Alexander watched as he picked food for Samantha and added it to her plate. After a few minutes, Alexander stood up. You two take your time, he said as he pushed his seat back and made for the door. Both Samantha and Thomas were silent as they listened to Alexander walk down the corridor and then climb the stairs to the second floor. Once he was sure he wouldn't be overheard, Thomas approached Samantha and quietly asked, Do you want a divorce, Alex? Samantha was stunned and hesitated. Two months earlier, she would have said yes immediately. She shook her head and answered her brother. Tom, I owe Alex a favor. I'll pay it back for you. I have money, Thomas said excitedly. He couldn't bear to see his sister suffer in a loveless marriage. I know you only married Alexander because you wanted to get my medical fees paid, but I have money. I can feed myself and you. Thomas regretted not being more aware at the time of what had happened with his medical expenses. He had overestimated the so-called familial love of the Miller family and thought he meant more to them than he did. Samantha thought that Thomas meant he could earn money and said, Tom, there are some favors that can't be returned. Saving a life and protecting relationships aren't things that can be measured with money and power, she thought. Her thoughts were interrupted when her phone suddenly vibrated on the table. It was a message from David. Sam, I heard that you suddenly left the competition. David hadn't heard about it. He had watched most of the show, but there was no other woman he wanted to see. After asking around, he found out that Samantha had run away. David's message reminded Samantha that she had, indeed, left the competition. She knew it would cause problems within the organizing committee, and she hoped that it hadn't been too much of a mistake. She assumed David had read the news online, and she replied, Yes, I had to leave. I have something to do. Thank you for your concern, Mr. Matthew. The reply from David came quickly. Is the matter serious? Do you need my help? Samantha replied, No, it's not serious. It has already been taken care of. Who are you texting, Sam? Thomas asked. Is he handsome? Does he like you? He didn't want to pry, but his eyes were sharp. He glanced at the phone screen and saw the offer for help. What nonsense are you talking about? It's just a friend. Samantha scolded him jokingly. After they had finished eating, the maid came to clean up the bowls and cutlery. Samantha's eyes stopped on Alexander's abandoned plate. She had been busy talking to Thomas and hadn't noticed that Alexander hadn't eaten much food at all. She encouraged Thomas to go to his room to rest and read a book, and he didn't argue. Despite receiving admission to a top university, he had decided that he didn't need a diploma to earn a lot of money. He had learned many things by himself, and he wanted to deal with his so-called sister, Lily. With her brother back in his room, Samantha walked into the kitchen and began to prepare some food for Alexander. It took her about an hour, and when she was done, she carried the dish carefully to the study. Alexander immediately recognized it was Samantha knocking from the three light knocks that sounded. He called out, the door opened, and he saw Samantha standing holding a dish of food. Eat. I made it, she said, as she placed the dish down on the desk and stirred it with a spoon. Alexander had been hungry for a long time. He leaned against the back of the chair and looked at the food. It smelled delicious. I thought you only cared about your little brother, he said moodily. 
Samantha felt helpless at his reaction. Don't you like Thomas? She asked. She noticed that Alexander's expression had not changed since Thomas had appeared. Does it look like he likes me? Asked Alexander. Samantha sighed and stopped herself from shaking her head. She picked up the bowl and scooped up a spoonful. She carefully blew on it and then placed it in front of Alexander's mouth for him to eat. Alexander's cold expression didn't change. He looked at the spoon with disdain, and then he opened his mouth reluctantly. The chicken soup was smooth and comforting. The vegetables were tender, and the fresh fragrance drifted up his nostrils. It's delicious, he thought. Most of Alexander's gloominess immediately dissipated, and when Samantha held another spoonful in front of him, he opened his mouth and didn't make things difficult for her. She moved closer, and Alexander could see every detail of her face. Her skin was smooth and delicate, to the point that there were no pores in sight. The soup was hot, and Samantha moved slowly to allow it to cool down. Alexander felt that it was too troublesome, so he took hold of the porcelain bowl with one hand and pulled her waist with the other. He held her firmly and pressed her to sit on his lap. "'Hey, what are you doing?' asked Samantha. "'Let's eat.' replied Alexander, as he held the bowl with one hand and the spoon with the other. He spooned another mouthful of soup into his mouth. Samantha felt embarrassed sitting on his knee, but she was even more embarrassed when he tried to feed her a spoonful of soup. Alex, I have a cold. You'll get it if we share a spoon, she said, trying to refuse him. She thought it was too intimate to eat from the same bowl and use the same spoon. Alexander's face sank. Sam, do you still dislike me? He asked. I honestly don't. You can eat it yourself. I'm full, she replied. Alexander snorted and looked at her. Samantha felt her scalp tingle under his gaze. She was trapped in his arms and wanted to run, but she couldn't. She bit the bullet and took a spoonful. Serves you right if you get sick, she said. You want to infect me? Alexander asked. He looked at her lips and said, You can try it. Kiss me. Samantha turned her head away in anger and didn't answer him. He continued to eat his dinner, and she wanted to get up and move away from him. Once the bowl was empty, she took it and ran out of the study. At the same time, Alexander received a message from Jack. Caleb has been dealt with. Back downstairs, Samantha went online and found two explosive comments on one of her social media accounts. One was about Caleb. It exposed many of his hidden rules, his lack of credibility, his sudden change of plans, threats, and other such acts. It also revealed that he had used his position to suppress the younger generation and reported cases of his betrayal, his ingratitude, and so on. Samantha guessed that Caleb's company would immediately terminate his contract and that no other companies would be interested in working with him. Caleb has clearly offended someone, but I don't know who, she thought. The other comment was about Lily's marriage. As she wasn't interested in Lily or her marriage, she didn't look at it. Instead, she decided to take a look at the final result of Road to the Top. Lily had won, but she hadn't received the favor of any famous designers and didn't receive any invitations for further shows. It was all because of the engagement farce being made public, and the trolls online thrived on the drama. At the Miller house, Lily was crying, and May, who was sitting beside her, had a headache and didn't know how to comfort her. Chris was on the phone and spoke respectfully to the person on the other end. Mrs. Jackson, rest assured that our family doesn't blame you. We know that you didn't want this to happen either. When he hung up the phone, the flattering smile on his face disappeared. He looked at Lily crying and was angered. Why are you crying? If you didn't flaunt your engagement with Brady, would it have turned out like this? He asked his daughter. What's wrong with her telling everyone that she's getting married? May shouted. Why shouldn't she? It's all Brady's fault. If it wasn't for him flirting and asking for trouble, our daughter wouldn't be criticized like this. Chris widened his eyes and replied, And why are you wasting the family's money? Do you know how much of our company's shares have evaporated? If we don't rely on the Jackson family, how can we make a comeback? May lowered her head unhappily and chose not to say any more. They all sat in silence for a while, and then May received a text message. It told her that the person who had anonymously exposed the details of the engagement video was Brooklyn. 
May read out the message containing further details about Lily and Chris. Lily looked at her father and mother as she listened. She gradually felt numb and cold as her heart stopped racing. Although she had looked down on Brooklyn previously and used her, she had grown to like her and thought of her almost as a friend. She was shocked. Dad, I want to tell you something, Lily suddenly said. Later that day, Brooklyn was trending on social media. Lily had gone online and exposed Brooklyn and what had happened in the second round of the competition. Everyone knew that she had deliberately snatched Samantha's male model, resulting in him being replaced by David. Samantha had originally been absent from the competition, and Lily had been deeply immersed in the public opinion already. Brooklyn had the most to lose, as she had already received offers of work from several companies. She had been in the middle of deciding which to go with when one agency called to cancel the offer. Confused, she had asked why and had been told about the news online. When she logged on, she saw Lily's counterattack and immediately picked up the phone. Lily, what did you do? She asked as Lily picked up. I'm just kidding you, Lily. You cheated me. Lily replied. What are you talking about? Brooklyn retorted. You just still want to treat me as a pawn in your game to deal with Sam. Yes, so what? Lily replied. Brooklyn had been pretending to be angry initially, but there was no pretending any longer. She hung up the phone in contempt. Brooklyn took her annoyance out online, where she openly quarreled with Lily. She wrote that Lily saw Samantha as a thorn in her side and repeatedly hinted that she needed to deal with Samantha. She also mentioned that Lily had previously instigated problems. After a while, another anonymous person revealed that Samantha had worked for Glamathon and what things had happened there that also involved Lily. Lily had originally thought that Brooklyn was the only person who wanted to mess with her, but it was clear to her someone else was involved. After searching for a long time, she was unable to find out who had leaked the information. She fell into an even deeper storm of public opinion. That year's road to the top had started with a rise to fame for her, but she had fallen from grace and was a disappointment. Samantha had watched everything unravel online, checking all the different social media and gossip sites. It was getting late. She suddenly remembered that there was something she needed to tell Alexander. Lily had started to doubt his identity. She went up to the bedroom, but he was still in the study. Samantha sat on the bed to wait for him as she didn't want to disturb him. The day had taken its toll on her, and she suddenly felt very tired, so she laid down to get more comfortable. She almost instantly fell asleep. Alexander was busy. Other than company matters and business, there was also Lorraine in Brooklyn to think about. He decided not to let Lorraine get away with her behavior. He was about to finish up when he received an email. I've got Lily. You can transfer the money. Brooklyn had not originally dared to punish Lily. She needed to work and earn money, and she couldn't afford Lily's retaliation. She was almost out of money when Alexander offered to pay her to reveal Lily's shortcomings. As she had fallen out with Lily, she had taken full advantage of the offer. Alexander sneered at the email, but then transferred a large sum of money to Brooklyn's account before returning to his bedroom. On entering, he saw Samantha lying on the bed. The blanket wasn't covering her, and her face was buried under the soft blanket. Alexander frowned and quickly walked over. He gently moved her so that she was laying properly on the bed and covered her with the blanket. Then, he went into the bathroom. After showering, he lay on the bed next to Samantha. He didn't immediately try to fall asleep. Instead, he opened the browser on his phone and searched to see if people thought it was difficult to learn to cook. Every site he looked at said it was easy, and he put down his phone without worry. If it's not difficult to cook, what is there to be so proud of? It's no big deal, he thought. He moved under the blanket and hugged Samantha. He hadn't hugged her for a long time, and her soft body filled his empty heart. He felt a warm sensation in his chest. Samantha suddenly whimpered in discomfort in her sleep. He frowned and remembered that there was a bruise on her back. He quickly moved his hands away. 
He only dared to hug her weakly and didn't dare to press her into his arms. Baby, get better quickly, he whispered and kissed the corner of her mouth. Then he rolled over and fell into a deep sleep. When Samantha woke up in Alexander's arms, she was stunned. She had been sleeping alone, and she wasn't used to being intimate with him. His eyes were closed, and his eyelashes looked long and thick. His eyebrows were sharp like swords. Samantha thought when he was sleeping he looked gentle, like a docile big dog. But then he opened his eyes, and he transformed into a terrifying wolf. Alexander lowered his head and kissed Samantha before saying, Are you captivated by your man? Samantha covered her mouth and frowned as she complained to him. You didn't brush your teeth. Offended, he took hold of her face and kissed her small mouth again. Samantha was speechless. She wondered if he knew she had been watching him, and she blushed. When did you wake up? she asked. Alexander looked at her with interest. About half an hour ago, he answered. Why did he have his eyes closed, pretending to sleep? she wondered with a pout. I won't be so careless next time, she decided. Right, Samantha said, sitting up, suddenly remembering why she had gone to see Alexander the night before. I think Lily might know your identity. Alexander didn't seem to care, and Samantha guessed that his attitude meant he had deliberately exposed his identity. She was confused. Alexander got off the bed and walked to the closet. Samantha suddenly covered her eyes. Alex, don't you wear clothes when you sleep? she asked in alarm. He stood and looked at her, and then down at his naked body. He smiled and couldn't help but tease her. Mrs. Brown, have you never seen me naked before? You're so shy. You've always worn clothes in the past, she replied. Mrs. Brown, I only wore them in the past to let you get used to me. Samantha quickly said, In the future, you can... But Alexander interrupted her. I won't wear them in the future, he said, almost challenging her to reply. He had never liked feeling tied up when he slept, and since he and Samantha had slept together, he no longer thought that there was a reason to hide and wear pajamas. It seemed to him that she thought otherwise. Your expensive pajamas are for decoration, are they? she asked. Alexander didn't reply and proceeded to get dressed. He was going to the office, so he put on a formal shirt and pants. Whilst he was in the walk-in wardrobe, he chose an outfit for Samantha. It was fall, so he chose a long, vintage dress with sleeves and a knitted jacket. He held it out to Samantha, who bit her lower lip hesitatingly, but then grabbed the outfit with one hand. She thanked him and turned around to undress. Alexander admired her pale skin before his eyes fell on the bruises on her back and elbow. He felt guilt creep into his stomach. Alexander reached out a hand and touched Samantha's back. She jumped up in fright. What are you doing? She quickly hugged herself and bent forward, trying to hide. Don't move, Alexander said in a low voice. I'll apply the ointment for you. Samantha lay on the bed, her back completely exposed to the air. She shivered and goosebumps appeared on her arms. She turned her head and saw Alexander's serious expression. She quickly looked at the spot where Alexander's belt was. What are you looking at? he asked. Samantha rolled her eyes. I'm not looking at anything. Alexander helped her up and gently pinched the soft flesh on her waist. His thin lips moved closer to her ear. So? Samantha realized he was teasing her, and she blushed. Before either of them could say or do anything else, someone knocked on the door. Sam, are you up yet? I've made breakfast for you. Thomas's voice came from outside. Alexander's face darkened, and Samantha's face became even redder. She pulled the clothes from Alexander's hands and finished dressing. Thomas is here. Stop messing around, she said. Alexander took the dress back from her with a dark face. Don't move, he commanded, and then he continued to dress Samantha. He really enjoyed the feeling of taking care of her with his own hands. Samantha tried to speak to him, but Alexander hushed her. She didn't know what was wrong with him, and she wondered why he was suddenly unhappy. She had a feeling it was to do with Thomas, so for the sake of her brother, she didn't say anything else. Downstairs, Thomas had made pancakes, along with some scrambled eggs and toast. Samantha thanked her brother a few times and then let him eat first. Then, she went into the kitchen to prepare breakfast for Alexander. 
Taking advantage of Samantha being in the kitchen, Thomas looked at his brother-in-law with a look of disgust. It's all your fault. My sister can't even eat properly, he said angrily. Alexander looked expressionlessly across the table. If he wasn't Sam's brother, I'd throw him out, he thought. Samantha cooked a bowl of porridge for Alexander and added some fruit on top. She placed it in front of him before saying, Next time I wake up early, I'll make a sumptuous breakfast for you. Sam, you didn't even cook for me, complained Thomas. Stop it. You made breakfast for yourself, she replied as she picked up some more pancakes and put them on her brother's plate. She knew he just wanted to make a fuss because he and Alexander didn't get along. While Samantha wasn't paying attention, Thomas and Alexander's eyes met again. Alexander gave his brother-in-law a proud look that made Thomas furious. He hoped it wouldn't be long before Alexander went out so that he could speak with his sister alone. Thomas, come with me, said Alexander. Thomas looked at him quizzically and then at his sister. Alex, where are you going? Samantha asked, frowning slightly. I'm going to take him to the hospital for an examination. Alexander looked at Samantha with a cold and unhappy look. Why do you ask? Are you worried that I'll sell your little brother? Thomas stayed seated. I don't want to go. I'm in good health. The doctor who came yesterday said that I'm fine, he said adamantly. He didn't want to go anywhere with Alexander. Tom, the doctor only did a simple checkup yesterday. Listen to me and go to the hospital for a full checkup. It will put my mind at ease, pleaded Samantha. He couldn't argue with his sister, so Thomas followed Alexander outside and got into the waiting car. Where are you taking me? asked Thomas. He curled his lips. I don't believe you really take me to the hospital for a checkup. Alexander wanted a cigarette, but as he glanced at the young man beside him, he controlled his hands. He knew that if Samantha got a whiff of secondhand cigarette smoke around her sickly brother, she wouldn't be happy at all. Instead, Alexander took out a pile of documents and looked down. He said, There's a cargo ship heading to South Africa from the harbor today. I'll stuff you into the hold. Your sister won't know anything and won't be able to find you. Alex! Thomas exclaimed, and his eyes widened in disbelief. He was surprised at Alexander's brazen plan. He recalled all the rumors he had heard about Alexander, and he started to panic. You can't do this! You're my brother-in-law! My sister would never forgive you! Thomas pleaded. Alexander sneered and tilted his head to look at him before saying, Oh, so now I'm your brother-in-law, am I? It's the first time you haven't called me Alex. Thomas shook his head, unsure what to say. Through the rearview mirror, he saw Tim in the driver's seat, with a kind smile on his face, and he realized Alexander was teasing him. Thomas stared out of the car window, dwelling on his health issues and wallowing in self-pity. The route was crowded with cars and buses, and he quickly realized that they were on the way to the hospital. Five minutes later, the car came to a stop outside the best private hospital in Springfield. Thomas turned to Alexander and looked at him suspiciously. "'You really want to take me for an examination?' he asked. Even though they were parked outside the hospital, Thomas still didn't trust Alexander's intentions. "'Come on, let's go in,' Alexander urged impatiently. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.